So today I want to talk about what's on your mind and how it's keeping you up at night. Did you know that if you don't get adequate rest, it can raise your levels of stress? And when your levels of stress are up and you're feeling stressed out, um, overworked, overwhelmed, confused, it also lowers your levels of self, self esteem, self confidence, self image, self love, and self worth. And when you're feeling low levels of self and high levels of stress, and you're not sleeping at night, that is the perfect cocktail for mm, being down on yourself, bringing um, disaster into your life. That's a big word, I know, disaster. But it can feel like nothing is going right in your life and everything that you try is not working out. And then you go to sleep at night and before you fall asleep, you're thinking about why the day didn't go well. And you wake up in the morning and you're thinking about, oh my gosh, today is going to be another day like yesterday because I didn't figure out why yesterday went wrong. So today is sure to follow in that footsteps. So this video might help you if you find yourself in that cycle, okay? All right, so first of all, when you're not sleeping well at night and you have something on your mind, have you determined what that something is? What's bothering you? And you might say to me, uh, yeah, duh, I know exactly what it is, it's X. But here's the thing, our minds are so smart. We really are, we are our intelligent human beings. And our minds are so smart and our ego mind is there to protect us. So that thing that's really bothering you, your ego mind will disguise it to be other things. So here's an example. Let's say in the cause of your stress, you were at the end of your rope and you were short with someone. It could be someone at your favorite coffee shop. Maybe you didn't respond to them the way you normally do. Maybe you had an argument argument with your mother, with your spouse, with your children. Uh, maybe you're short with your coworkers or your employees and you're just feeling off. Okay, but you tell yourself that you were those things and you acted that way because of X, right? Whatever your X is that's keeping you up at night, whatever your X is that you're not sleeping. But the truth is, it's not about X. The problem is never the problem. The problem is a symptom. And the symptom is something that your higher self is helping you to create so that you can take a look at what you are in resistance of. So now let's go back to one of those arguments. Let's say that you had an argument with your spouse and you once again had a very familiar conversation you're so sick and tired of him and her, him or her, not, um, I don't know, after all these years, still can't find the laundry basket or something. You know, something, it could be something trivial, but it really sets you off and it really bothers you. But you see, the key is, it's not because you're stressed out that that's bothering you. What's stressing you out is that you're not getting to the belief around the feeling that gets you stressed out. Are you with me? Okay, so if you stop and you ask yourself, all right, let's just take this one scenario. Why do I get so upset about my spouse not being able to put his or her laundry in the laundry basket? Instead leaves them all over the floor. Okay, so the thing is, is you we tend to blame others for where we are oh, if only my spouse would learn to pick up after him or herself, then my life would be perfect. It would, things would be so much better. But we know that it's not about the laundry. It's about how your spouse is mm, paying attention to the laundry or following your wishes or not following your wishes. That feeling, what is that feeling? Are you feeling unheard? Are you feeling... Um, disrespected? Are you feeling um, ignored? What is that feeling that comes up for you that you're not taking the time to pay attention to because you've gotten in that habit of that quick release like oh, you did this again and rah, 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 and, and you go off. 
So instead of doing what you normally do, instead of falling into your old habits and patterns, stop and give yourself permission to say, okay, what, how does this make me feel? And when you can get to the root of that feeling, now you want to ask yourself, well, what do I believe about this feeling? Because there's a belief that you've also created that's strongly attached to that feeling. And that feeling and that belief, that's what's keeping you up at night. That is the key that will help you sleep soundly if you're ready to take a look at it. Now, sometimes these feelings and beliefs are something that we've buried deep down inside of us. And we've spent years and years and years not looking at it. And we've spent years and years and years um, learning to cope or learning to be in resistance. And so we do something for quick fixes, you know, like, oh, a couple glasses of wine or some haagen or a, a run on the beach or whatever your quick fix is. See, what you're doing is you're giving yourself that quick fix so you feel better in the moment, but then you still haven't addressed the feeling and the belief that's underlying to whatever it is that you are in resistance of. Now, when you get to the root of the feeling and you say, oh, okay, yeah, when he or she does this, I feel X. Okay, excellent. Now, you've, you've um, identified that feeling. Now you wanna sit with it for a moment. How does that make you feel? And I know that sounds like a crazy question, but seriously, our feelings are what's driving us for everything. Your feelings are whether you're sleeping well or not sleeping well. Your feelings are, they're everywhere. They're driving the bus of your life. So how does it make you feel to feel that feeling? And then what belief have you created around that feeling? Oh, because I'm not good enough, because, you know, nobody ever pays attention to me, because whatever your belief is, it's something that you created and you have brought with you from childhood into adulthood, and you're still feeding that belief. So when you can master that belief, when you can really step into it and say, oh, okay, you know, I've always thought it was that. But actually, now that I really give myself time to think about this, I understand that I do feel this way. But I resist this feeling because it sucks, right? Nobody wants to really delve into those feelings that make us feel very low levels of self. But when you do, when you're ready to look at that, when you're ready to master your beliefs, you'll find that the problem that you keep rehashing and going over in your mind will no longer be there. You'll be able to let it go and you'll be able to sleep. If you have challenges with this, I invite you to visit masteringyourbeliefs.com. Spend some time there, check out what's available. And if you have any questions, ask your sensei. In the meantime, This is Nancy Muller, the one and only Life Sensei, saying ciao for now.